On the final Sunday of ordinary time each year, the Catholic Church celebrates the Solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe, also known as Christ the King Sunday. Unlike the kings of earth that merely rule nations, we celebrate the fact that Jesus is the Lord of everything in creation, from the smallest quirk to the vastness of space. Which raises an interesting question if you think about it. How did everything get there in the first place? Unfortunately, I don't have a time machine to go back and look myself, so we're gonna need the next best thing, a Bible. This is Catholicism in Focus. In the beginning, there were no witnesses to tell us how it happened. But if we look to scripture, we can find a theological account of the significance of creation. The book of Genesis tells us, Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. Evening came and morning followed the first day. For six days, God followed this pattern. He spoke and it came to be. What's interesting about this account is not so much the order or taxonomy, but the power it reveals about God. God has the ability to create simply by speaking. And whereas you and I can create using the material all around us, reforming them into something new, God literally made something out of nothing. Not only is this a tremendous theological statement about God, it's particularly unique to the Abrahamic faiths. While many ancient religions existed alongside the ancient Israelites and had their own creation myths, none of them believed in a God that created ex nihilo, or out of nothing. What's even more interesting though, and this may surprise you, is that Genesis contains a second creation myth from an entirely different perspective. What? As I mentioned in the video about the origin of the Bible, many texts contain sources from multiple authors put together by an editor or redactor many years later. Starting at Genesis 2-4, we see a story with a different narrative structure, different choice of words, and even different theology than the chapter before it. Unlike the first account, the story has the first human created before the animals. Man and woman are created separately. And rather than just speaking things into being, God physically works to form man out of the dust of the earth and then breathes life into him. Nothing like the stoic and intimidating depiction of God in Genesis 1, the depiction of God in Genesis 2 is not afraid to get his hands dirty, to come among us, and to intimately share part of himself with others. For some, this might be confusing and seem challenging to our faith. How can there be two stories? One would have to be right and the other wrong, right? If we were reading this scientifically, then yes, that would be right. Genesis 1 and 2 clearly contradict one another on details of order and manner of creating. And while some will try to do tremendous mental gymnastics to fit the two stories together, maintaining that they account for one literal scientific account of creation, we as Catholics don't need to do that. Think of it this way. You could watch Apocalypse Now, Good Morning Vietnam, Full Metal Jacket, Forrest Gump, and Ken Burns' PBS special on the Vietnam War. All of them offer a perspective on the Vietnam War. All of them are based in truth. And all of them reveal something that the others don't. If our goal was solely to determine which one was most historically accurate, focusing on the facts of history, the only one that we could consider applicable would be the documentary, the others are works of fiction and so useless. But if our goal is to capture what the Vietnam War meant to people, the truth of the event, then all of them must be held together because each one offers an important piece of the overall picture that the others leave out. For us, the purpose of scripture is to reveal faith. What matters is not the literal details of each story or how factually accurate everything is, but how those details reveal the mystery of God and the way to salvation. When we focus on truth and not facts, we find that the two mythological creation stories do not contradict one another, but actually serve as complements in revealing a wider story. Together, we see that God is transcendent, yet imminent, stoic, yet intimate, powerful, yet gentle, organized, yet spontaneous. Only when we are able to hear both stories do we understand all of these attributes. So what about our original question? How did everything get there in the first place? Theologically speaking, we can say that God created it all and nothing came to be that didn't come from God. We can say that everything in creation is good and that all of creation has a purpose. And we can say that of all creation, humanity was created in a special way with an important responsibility. But when did this happen? How big is creation? Have things developed since then or have they stayed the same? Unfortunately, scripture just doesn't give answers to those things. As hard as we may look and as clever as we may be, they're simply not a part of the deposit of revelation. And maybe that's okay. 
Maybe we're content knowing what faith can reveal to us, that God is the source of all creation and that we bear a special place in it. But maybe it's not. Maybe you want to know more. Maybe you want to use all the faculties God has given you, sense perception, rationality, memory, intuition, to search deeper through the study of science, to know what God reveals to us in creation. Maybe you want to know what the church thinks about the Big Bang Theory and evolution and all that's out there. If this sounds like you, then just maybe you'll come back next week for part two. Thanks for watching this episode of Catholicism in Focus, made possible by Kevin Coe and all the patrons on Patreon. Be sure to check out all the great content on breakingintheHabit.org and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more pictures, videos, and posts.